Welcome to our talk shop presentation on microsites for blended learning experiences. I am Ileana. I am Sharon. And I am Safika. We represent the art team at CHIJ, our Lady of the Nativity. In this presentation, we are going to share with you how we use microsites to facilitate blended learning experiences in our school. We will also show you how easy it is to create and maintain a microsite. And towards the end of the session, we will share with you some of our challenges, key learning points, as well as essential tips for all of you who are interested in starting a microsite for your department. Now, let's get started with the all-important question, why blended learning? In the addendum to the President's Address on the 25th of August this year, Mr Lawrence Wong, Minister of Education Singapore, talked about how blended learning will become an integral feature of Singapore's curriculum so as to better prepare our students for the future. In defining the why behind the shift to blended learning, here are some questions to keep in mind as you experience our presentation. So, what makes a blended learning experience? Let's start with blended learning. In literature on educational technology, blended learning is commonly defined as a combination of face-to-face -face traditional instruction and online learning. In her book, Balance with Blended Learning, Kathleen Tucker describes blended learning as active engaged learning online combined with active engaged learning in class. Kathleen believes that the goal of blended learning is to give learners more control over four specific aspects of their learning. These four aspects are Time, Place, Pace and Path. Typically, students do not have much control over these elements. With blended learning, there is a shift of control from the teacher to the students so that they become drivers of their learning and are developed to be independent, self-directed learners. In a webinar with ETD last December, Caitlin emphasised how students do not have to have control over these elements all of the time and that the idea is to give them some control some of the time which, in her opinion, is more control than most students currently have in most classrooms. She said, and I quote, We have to recognise that for a lot of kids, they spend six to seven hours a day in classrooms where they don't make any decisions. They are told what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Therefore, in trying to give students more control over time, place, pace and path, as teachers, we need to rethink how we design our lessons so that we can harness the affordances of technology to transform learning in the classroom. Through this, we will be able to give students voice and choice in terms of what, when and how they learn. Next, we look at the term experiences. Now, imagine a teacher who walks into class and says, Are you ready for a learning experience? As opposed to, Are you ready for the lesson? How does it make you feel? Matt Miller wrote in his book, By itself, a lesson isn't an experience. In general, we are not excited about being taught a lesson, but we are always game for an experience, simply because experiences are memorable. In his book, Miller also discussed the success that Dave Burgess had with a teaching method known as pirate teaching, which has characteristics 
that make learning engaging, such as connecting with students on a personal level to build a safe, fun environment, harnessing the most powerful tool to create high-impact teaching, and rethinking what's possible in the classroom to break down barriers. According to Miller, teachers need to look at learning through a fun lens, whether it is by using a compelling story, a favourite app, or anything that puts the lesson in a new light will grab students' attention. The goal of creating learning experiences is to pique students' interests, engage their senses, and let their imagination take them on an adventure all of which he believes can be enhanced with technology. So how do we use microsites to facilitate blended learning experiences? The goal of creating blended learning experiences in the teaching and learning of art in our school is about engaged learning. Whether it is online or in the classroom, with or without technology, it is about creating memorable and meaningful learning experiences for our students. Now, let's look into how the art teachers in our school have used microsites to facilitate this. So, what exactly is a microsite? Yep. Yeah. 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 Nope. Yep. Yeah. A microsite is a website with a special purpose. While the school website communicates to the public a variety of information related to the school, a microsite will usually focus on a single aspect. We started All N Arts Avenue in 2019 with the intention to make art learning more accessible to students and parents. When schools closed and we went into full home-based learning in April this year, we realised that there was a lot more possibilities we had yet to explore, more specifically in the ways in which we could use the microsite to facilitate engaged learning online as well as in the physical classroom. So, after almost two years since we started All in Arts Avenue, we are here to share with you how we have used microsites to meet the unique learning needs of our students. When we designed the microsite, we designed it with our users in mind, our students and our teachers. Here are some of the key user demands that we identified during the design process. Now, let's discuss microsites for blended learning experiences based on Caitlin Tucker's four aspects of time, place, pace, and path. As we mentioned earlier, the goal is to give students more control over the four specific aspects of their learning. Time is a scarce resource especially for art teachers. If some of the content delivery can be done online, teachers will be able to spend more time in class to connect with students and meet their unique learning needs. As microsites provide a larger canvas as compared to a slideshow, teachers can present more digital content on the microsite. A microsite also allows for information to be presented in multiple ways to engage different types of learners. Teachers can integrate various multimedia such as video, audio, images as well as interactive video games all on one platform to provide students with a multimodal learning experience. Teachers can also create instructional videos on various topics. By flipping the lesson, students will be able to control the amount of time they spend on specific areas of the lesson according to their respective learning needs. 
when introducing a new artist or artwork to students, they will be able to access the learning content online before the lesson. During face-to-face -face lessons in class, teachers can then tap on this prior knowledge for a deeper discussion or engage students in activities where they can apply what they have learned. One of the key advantages of making learning content available online is accessibility. Students will be able to access the materials anytime and anywhere. When using digital tools such as Padlet or Seesaw, all students will be given the opportunity to have their voices heard, regardless of where they are. This helps to foster better peer relationships, increase student participation, as well as enhance student engagement in art. Parents can also have access to the learning content and be able to better support the children at home. With OLN Arts Avenue, the interface that teachers use in the classroom is the exact same interface that students use when learning online in the classroom or at home. We designed the lessons to ensure that learning flows seamlessly between school and home. Instructional strategies such as artful thinking routines as well as teacher actions from the Singapore Teaching Practice were used to facilitate the lesson flow on OLN Arts Avenue. We also ensured that our tone and choice of words used in the site were student-friendly. One such example is in the way we changed the term art task to art challenge to promote the growth mindset. These strategies not only help teachers when facilitating a lesson in the classroom, they also guide students' thinking as they navigate through the microsite independently. By flipping the instruction on the microsite, students will be able to self-pace their learning. Through the use of videos, students can control the pace at which they consume the content. They can pause or re-watch the video as many times as needed. When we first introduced Adobe Photoshop to our primary six pupils, one of the biggest challenges we faced was having to constantly repeat our instructions, demonstrate the process, and explain how to use the tools to create the artwork. And because we spent so much time going over the instructions repeatedly, there was very little time for students to explore and experiment with their ideas. So when we started using teacher-created instructional videos on the microsite last year, we found that the lessons went a lot more smoothly as students were able to pace their learning according to their needs. As most students were able to learn independently, teachers could give more attention to students who were struggling as well as stretch the learning of high-progress learners. By going beyond the constraints of slide presentations, microsites enable students to experience non-linear lesson structures and interactive functions. Teachers can extend students' learning experiences by integrating numerous open access resources which students can use to create unique learning pathways for themselves. By having questions throughout OLN Arts Avenue, we also hope to encourage students to be curious about the things around them. There is so much that students can learn from and about their experiences through the internet as information is now so easily available. The important thing is to nurture the natural explorers in students so that they remain curious about things. Thus, teachers need to give students every opportunity possible to explore and discover the world in our physical and online classrooms so that they become self-directed and independent learners 
who find joy in the learning process. In his book, Matt Miller also shared several hooks for teachers to turn their lessons into experiences by helping students make connections to the learning content. When we designed the lessons in OLN Arts Avenue, we wanted students to be able to connect what they learned in art to other subjects in school as well as their personal experiences. For example, by integrating content such as storytelling and how different mediums are made, we help students see how languages, science and art are interrelated in multiple ways. When we help students make these connections, the learning experience also becomes more relevant and meaningful to them. I'm Ileana, I'm an art teacher, and I'm also an Oscar at SG Grunty. Hearts of Hope is a project where we hope to put together art kits and give these kits to children from less privileged backgrounds as well as differently abled children. And the idea behind this project, right, is to actually conduct little art lessons with them. And with the artworks that they create, we're going to have a virtual art exhibition. visually appealing. Whenever they encountered a problem, they could uh, go back to the videos or they could even go back to the instructions that were already stated in the site. Only this year, I ventured to create lessons on the microsite itself. Initially, when I first started, I thought that it would be difficult to create lessons on the microsite. But as I learned the different functions, I realized that it is actually quite similar to um, creating lessons on PowerPoint and even on SLS. The most challenging part is actually to get started. As I become familiar with creating simple lessons, I could explore including games or the other instructional videos that I create. And whilst we use microsites to help facilitate blended learning experiences in our school, it is certainly not the only way to do it. Do find out what works best for you and your students. In conclusion, we would like to say that although microsites are a lot of work in the beginning, we feel that it has and will continue to pay off in the long run as we truly believe that it is able to engage and meet the learning needs of students online as well as in the classroom. We just always find different ways that we can express our creativity. And aside from doing art, we can also learn about famous artists like Vincent Van Gogh. 
all the activities that are always like very fun and enjoyable and for each special day that's coming we always have a special activity so that we can like celebrate it in art. In art lessons I sometimes also learn things that I never knew about art like printmaking and blending. Um, I kind of just enjoy that I get to do things that I don't normally do in my house. My grandma would scold me if I were to do things like blending as it would make a mess inside my house but during school when I have art lessons I get to do it without getting scolded by anyone. The thing that is so special about our art lessons is basically all the activities that we do it's like we get to express our creativity like we're just supposed to do one simple thing but we can like add a lot of creativity into it to be honest i don't really know i think everything is special about art lessons i go for art class on saturdays i'm not really allowed to talk to anyone i just do some painting and then leave the class as if nothing happened but during art class i get to share some fun facts with my friends talk to them and do painting, one of my favorite things, all at the same time. That is why I find art lessons in this school special. Because we got to create beautiful artworks and get our fingers dirty. I got to explore deeper into the facts of Singapore and I also got to do research on some of my favorite foods. Finally, learned how to paint watercolor. I have two favorites actually. One of them is the batik making because I got to explore how to do patterns nicely. And the second one is the one we're doing this week about sea creatures because I love animals and sea creatures. One of the videos I managed to learn how paint was made and I had no idea that that was how paint was made. I thought it's just simply water, some chemicals and just mixed together. I didn't know that it had to take like months just to make one tiny tube of paint. So that I'm sure I will treasure my paint more. When we watched the batik video, it helped me learn more about batik. And as I thought it was just making the easy pattern fabric and then and then uh, and then sewing it to be clothes and stuff. That's sometimes what my grandma does. I didn't know it takes so long to make batik. We did a reusable tote bag using my t-shirt and we had to use the scissors. So I could use the skills I learned in art to do the tote bag. One of the features in OLN Arts Avenue that I like is like that we can learn more about a new topic and we can play games like Yes the Sea Creatures. I think the whole class had a lot of fun. <laughs> some nice flowers for Teacher's Day. So now I know how I can make some nice cards to either like thank someone or like write happy birthday or like just like for fun.